expert. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents Murder by Experts. With your host and narrator, Mr. John Dixon Carr, world-famous mystery novelist and author of the recently published bestseller, The Life of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is John Dixon Carr. Each week at this time, Murder by Experts brings you a story of crime and mystery which has been chosen for your approval by one of the world's leading detective writers. Those experts who are themselves masters of the art of murder and can hold tensity at its highest. This time, our guest expert is the noted mystery writer, Mr. Bruno Fisher, who has selected a first-moving, realistic study of a killer at large. Written by Joseph Ruskell and Paul Monash. And now we present Kenneth Lynch in Prescription for Murder. On a Midwestern highway, a car bearing two men moves at a good speed through a dark and stormy night. The driver of the car has just turned on the car radio. Now from the local and state news, the giant manhunt is on tonight for escaped convict Curly Elgin, who shot his way out of the state prison at Harmon a few hours ago, killing two guards in the getaway. Roads in the vicinity of Harmon have been blocked, and search parties are combing the woods for the escaped desperado. All citizens are asked to be on the alert for Elgin, who is armed and dangerous. Elkins is six feet two, blue eyes, brown curly hair, pale complexion, with a horizontal scar on the left cheek. He was last seen wearing... Why did you turn it off, Doc? Why, I... Well, that is, the fog's bad enough without news like that distracting me. Hey, what's that wheel, Doc? Your hand's shaking. Why are you so nervous? Nervous? Well, it's, 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 it's just this, this fog. I can't see an inch ahead of me. It gives me the jitters. Oh, yeah. Hey, thanks for stopping to give me a lift. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Didn't think I'd ever get a lift tonight. No one likes to take on a hitchhiker. You from these parts? No way. You said you were going into town? Yeah. Which town? Oh, same one you're headed for. Somerset? Yeah, Somerset, that's it. <laughs> you know, it's funny how you get chummy on the road and tell your life's history, yeah? See you, Dr. Richard Bennett. You're going to Somerset to take over some ailing old MD's practice. His daughter, too, huh? Uh, what's her name again? Uh, Marcia? Yes. Uh, uh, what town did I pick you up at, friend? Harmon. So you've never seen Marcia or her old man, huh? Why, no. Uh, no, I haven't. Just exchanged letters with her from overseas Japan. Now here you are, coming to a strange town to take over. <laughs> Life history. Funny the way guys open up on the road, ain't it? Now, you take me. You know all about me, too, huh? No, I don't. You sure? You didn't say a word. You didn't open your mouth till now, just now, and... But what? And you turned the radio off and stared at me? I... stared at you? Yeah. Now, hey, watch the road, Doc. What was so interesting? Nothing. Uh, nothing at all. No, no, come on. Tell me, Doc. Why did you look at me like that? Why the sudden once-over? <laughs> once-over? <laughs> what gave you that idea? Never mind my ideas, Doc. I'm wondering about yours. But listen, you, you suddenly got a bright idea, didn't you, Doc? You saw the light, huh? <laughs> Maybe you can see this, too. This gun. Now, wait a second. Okay, Doc. Just pull over to the side of the road. Come on, Doc. Be smart. Pull over. Oh, no. No, I'm not going to pull over. I'm going fast. It's 55 now, 60. You can't shoot me, Elkins, not now. Not while I keep it going this fast. You got this thing all wrong, Doc. I can let you have it after all. What have I got to lose? If I get caught, it's the chair. We go off the road so I get killed, so what? But you, you get killed too, Doc. And you got to lose. Now look, I'm going to count to five, Doc. If you don't stop by then, I'm going to give it to you. One... Listen, Doc, stop the car now and you'll be okay. Two, maybe I'll take your car, but what have I got to gain by killing you? 
Three, Doc. Three. I'm not stopping. Out here in the country, you'll be stranded for the night, but I don't have to shoot you, Doc. I'll get my head start. Four. I said four, Doc. Getting kind of close. How? How do I know you won't shoot me? It's your only chance. If you don't stop now, I'm surely going to let you have it. The other way, you got a chance. Better, Doc. Now you're playing it smart. Okay, Doc, get out, but don't try anything. Now, look, Elton. You have nothing to gain by... I know, Doc. I said that myself. Now, start walking into those woods. But don't argue with me. Get going. You got a chance, Doc. Just trust your luck. It's been pretty good so far. Got you to be a sawbone. Got you a girl. Uh, this will do, Doc. Stop here. Now he can't be seen from the road. Elkins, I was only trying to be a decent guy, giving you a ride. Sure, Doc, you're a good guy. <laughs> you're a big guy, too, just about my size. Get off your coat, Doc. We're going to change clothes. Sure. Sure. Come on. Your shirt, too. It's my coat. Get a shirt. Right. Silk shirt, huh? Nice. The pants. Come on, hurry, all right, hurry. All right. It's fine, it's fine. Don't bother to put my stuff on. You won't catch cold. You don't have to be modest because... Oh. 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 <laughs> Who got it? What do you know? I closed my car. What a break. I don't to get to him. Park plugs must be wet. Come on, baby. Start stuff. There's somebody coming. Motorcycle cop. All right, you. What's the idea? Oh, what's the matter? The taillights out. Want somebody to come along and smash into you? Gosh, it was on the last time I noticed. Headlights are okay. Uh, let me start my motor. See if that makes any difference. All right. Maybe one I'm in. Uh, just a second. I'll have a look. No, switch on your brights. See if it works that way. Okay. Get the second. Yeah, God, look at the second while I sit in the race for like this. Ah! Copper. What's that? Roadblock. I'd have known they wouldn't waste any time. Hey, you want to get killed? Didn't you see this roadblock? I know. I... Sorry, officer, there's fog, you know. Well, let's see your license. Jameson, you come on to the other side. Okay, all right. What's the matter, officer? Is something wrong? Yeah, plenty. Some guy escaped from the state prison. Now, let's see your license. My license? You got one, ain't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's right here. In a wallet someplace. Yeah, here it is. Let's see now. Six feet two. 190, brown hair. Bennett. Dr. Rich Bennett? Huh? Oh, so you're the new doc coming to some set. I... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I heard old Doc Milburn's been expecting you. Doc Milburn's expecting The whole town's expecting him. Uh, excuse us for stopping you like this, Doc. Yes, right. sir. This is a head for reception. Uh, practically being me was took for an escaped convict. Well, uh, look, Red, I got an idea. Why don't we greet Doc Bennett here in style? You're going off duty in a few minutes anyway. Give him a motorcycle escort to Marsh's place. Hey, that's a swell idea. Now, wait, wait a minute. Well, I don't want... go for an answer. No, sir. Boy, would I like to see Marsh's face when you pull up with that siren going. Now, now, look, fellas. I appreciate all Skip this. Skip it, but... Doc. I'm already on the motorcycle. Come on. Let's go. Go ahead, Doc. I release those up in time. I'll bring up the rear. Here we are, Doc. 
Right, here's the house. Well, uh, thanks a lot, officer. Uh, I'll see you later. Sure, sure, but uh, let me get my first. No, no, that's all right. You just run along. I don't mind at all. Hey, Marcia. Marcia. Hello, Red. Is something wrong? Wrong? Everything's fine. Look who I got with me. Who? Him. Don't you know him? But Red, I, I never saw that man before in my life. See what goes. Look, you, didn't you say you was Dr. Richard Bennett? Oh, yes, yes. Dr. That... Richard Bennett? Oh, Dick, can you ever forgive me? Say, what is this? <laughs> I thought you'd recognize me at first sight, Marcia, after all I learned. Oh, Dick, do come in, please. Uh, don't stand out here. Now, look, Marshal. Oh, it's all doing? right, Red. And thanks for showing him the way. You see, Red, we, we'd never really met. Well, anyway, it, it's all right. <laughs> I'll be... Leave it to a woman to foul things up, eh, Doc? Had me thinking you were that escaped convict or something for a minute. Oh, Red. Well, we'll see you later. Goodbye, Red. Well, Dick... Do come in, please. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. But don't stand out there. Come on. You know, we'd just about given you up. It's so late, and Dad and I thought that with the fog and all over the road... Well, look, I'll call Dad. Well, I hope you look like this. I never thought... Well, I, I would have known you. Oh, I think I'd have known you, too, Dick, if you'd given me one second more. Tall, serious-looking... But you didn't write me that you were wounded. Wounded? Well, that scar on your cheek. Oh, oh that is. Well, I... Hey, Dad. Just came in, Marcy. Uh, Dad, he's here. Oh. Uh, uh, Dr. Bennett. Dr. Bennett, what are you? Well, at last. Hello, Dick. Don't mind my calling you that, though we've never met. Good to see you, Dr. Milburn. Uh, you must be tired and hungry. Well, I, I am a little. Of course you are. I'll show you up to your room and Marsh will warm up something for Dick. All right, Dad. Uh, there you are. I'll tell Dick all about Scotty, the motorcycle cop you used to keep company with. Oh, Dad. Until your male romance started, of course. Well, we can all have a nice long chat. You two can talk about those soulful letters, but <laughs> save me a moment with him, Marsha, to discuss his new case. All right, Dad. And uh, I'd like him to see some X-ray plates I've just developed him. Uh, right this way, Dick. Uh, okay. Over here. Here you are, Dick. X-ray shots. Get to know your future patients inside out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I know it's late, but uh, here's one I'd like your diagnosis on. My diagnosis? We'll see if it checks with mine. Here, take it. Oh, that's all right. Ah. What do you make of it? What, what do I make of it? Well, uh... I'd say... I'd say... What? This? Huh? <laughs> you will have your little joke, eh? What do you mean? Oh, you know well enough what I mean. <laughs> You're holding that X-ray upside down. <laughs> I'm hungry. Never been hungry in my life. You want any more, Dick? No, no, you just take it easy. Dick, you seem to jump. Is there anything wrong? Oh, no, I'm just tired. And, well, you know how it is. Coming into a strange town. Taking over a new practice. Patients I don't even know. Got me sort of phased. But that's what I always like about you. Your attitude. Attitude? When things go wrong. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole. You finish it, Dick. Uh, finish it? I'd like to hear you say it. Say what? Well, the rest of the poem. The poem? I, I don't know it. Oh, stop kidding, Dick. It's Invictus. Yeah? Well, I still don't know it. Well, that's strange. Why? Some people like one poem, others really don't. So what's strange? Because that was your favorite poem, Dick. You quoted it to me in one of your letters. Remember? How are you feeling now, Dick? Uh, uh, okay, I guess. Well, better get a good night's rest, then you can start right in tomorrow. Tomorrow? 
mean start treating patients tomorrow? Oh, yes. Sooner you take over, the better. Oh, but I'm all fagged out, Doc. I, I need a rest. Oh, by tomorrow, you'll be as fresh as day. No, no. Look, I, I need a couple of days. That's all. A couple of days, and then I'll be all set. Well, uh, Dick... Let me get accustomed to things, and then... Uh, I'll see who it is, Dad. Oh, yes. Excuse me, Dick. Is your dad in, Marsha? Yes, Ed. Oh, good Lord, what's happened? There's been an accident. Why, why it's gone. Yep, he must have got run over. We found him lying on the road near his motorcycle, unconscious. Dad! Dad! Yeah. Come here, quick! Uh, uh, what's happened? It's Scotty. He was run over. Oh, great heavens, bring him into my office. Easy now. Oh, easy. All right, Doc. Take it easy. Yeah. Right. Um, they put him down there. Here? Yeah, oh. uh, on the couch. Okay. Scotty? Oh, Scotty. Looks like hit and run, Doc. Yeah. I'm going down to headquarters and report. Yes, Fred, you do that. Uh, call me headquarters when you finish. Marsha, this is... Here, Doc. That's a cut away uniform. Oh, Scotty. Scotty, this is Marsha. Listen, Scotty. What happened? Mm, no nasal or arm hemorrhage. Good. So, so guy... Car parked at the side of the road. Easy now. I want to listen to your heart. How is he, Father? Uh, He'll be all right. Oh, thank goodness. Not a quick contusion and abrasion. Will you have to move him to the hospital, Dad? Well, not now. First aid, right now. He, he ran over me on purpose. But to kill me. What? I, I think it was the same killer. Curly Elkins. Curly Elkins? Did you get a good look at him? Uh, Scotty, describe him and we'll notify headquarters. Well, he, his height was about... Dr. Miller, I'll, uh, I'll take over this oh, patient. Dad. But, uh, Dr. Mennett, I don't... Well, uh, I thought you wanted to wait a few days. I know, but you were right. i I got to begin sometime, and may as well be now. The voice. What is it, Scotty? The voice. Just... Oh. Uh, oh. Lost consciousness again. What did he say? I don't know. Something about a voice. Just leave him to me. I'll handle it. Well, um, let me explain the case. I know. Um, it's an accident case. Yeah. How did you know? Well, I'm a mind reader. <laughs> Pretty obvious, isn't it? Well, um, I diagnose. I'll make my own diagnosis. Or, uh, all right, but uh, I'll just stay around and help. No, no help. What? No one's going to help me when you're gone, so I want to handle my very first case in this town alone. Very well. But, Dick, can I? I, I always help Father and Chase. No, I... no, Marcia. You go too. But don't worry. I know he means a lot to you both. Rest easy. I'll take good care of him. Very good care of him. Well, um, all right. Let's go, Marshal. How do you feel, Scotty? Uh, who, who are you? That you know. Honest. How did you get run over? Did you get a good look at the driver? No. You sure? I, I, I want to see old Doc Milburn. Why? What do you want to tell him? You sure you can't identify that driver? No. I don't believe you. You're lying. You said that voice. What voice? What did you mean? I, I, I want to talk to Marsha and the doc. Let me see him. I'm taking care of you, Scotty. I'm going to fix you up good right now. The scalpel ought to do the trick. Look, take it easy, what Scotty. Do? Why, still, just a little insurance, got... see? To make sure you feel all right. <laughs> <laughs> He'd hurry with Scotty. Dad, there's something funny about him, isn't there? You think so, too? Yes, I do. I recited a poem to him, one he'd sent me. Well, he didn't remember it. Oh. That's nothing to condemn a man for, but I don't know. Maybe we'd better check up while he's busy with Scotty. Yes, I, I can call his club in Los Angeles. Get a description of him. Maybe you'd better. All right. Hello? Hello, operator? Operator? Put down that phone. Put down that phone. That's better. We don't want the police now, do we? What have you done to Scotty? Get a box for him after I'm gone. Dr. Bennett. You're not Dr. Bennett. That's right. My name is Elkins. Curly Elkins. Dr. Bennett is lying out in the woods with a bullet in his head. I got a bullet for each of you, too, if you make one false You're move. You're not going to get away with this, Elkins. Dad, don't. Why, you old... Dad. 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 
Every scum of you, Doc. Never rush a guy with a gun. Now listen to me, both of you. In case the cops return to check on Scotty's condition, you won't let him in the door. Scotty was fixed up, so he went away for a rest. If either of you say one word out of time, you're going to get it. What do you want from us? Why don't you leave? Uh, 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 I'm staying right here, sister, right in this house until the heat's off. Remember this. I just as soon kill you as look at you. I'm staying put. You're going to cover for me. Because if you don't, if you your old man try anything or give me away, it's curtains for both of you. Now, how does that sound? Convincing? Well, 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 that wasn't such a bad night, now, was it? Cozy, just the three of us. <laughs> Lot better than the pen, huh? You can't keep this up forever, Elkins. Someone's sure to find out. And then... Then it's flowers for you. Yeah, and for your Marsha, too. Get up, Doc. I don't like to see you always laying around, see? He can't get up. You hurt his back when you hit him with your gun. But we'll get even with you, Elkins. You can't keep us prisoners forever. One of us will find a way. You can't always stay up chain smoking. You've got to go to sleep sometime. Yeah, sure I do, sis. But when I do, I'll take the old man into the room with me and tie him up. Then I'll lock the door and sleep with a gun under my pillow. If anyone tries to get into that room, you've got it all figured out, haven't you, Elkins? So what are you going to do in a couple of hours when my patients come in? <laughs> I've thought of that too, Doc. You'll tell them all you got kind of crippled falling down the stairs, see, and you'll send them away. But you won't let out one peep because all the time I'll be upstairs with Marcia. She'll stay alive as long as you play ball, Doc. That's just how long, no more. What's taking us so long? Hurry up with that coffee. It's not spoiled yet, Elkins. What's taking us so long? You're growing it. Gotta have a swallow job, are you here? Marsh is bringing it. What's the matter? Why so jumpy? Why are your eyes so bloodshot? Shut up. Look at your hands, trembling. What is it? Conscience? I doubt it. Shut up, Doc. Clam up your hair. Nerves? What are you afraid of? You've got the gun in your hand. Clam up, I say you want. Let's see who's jumpy. As soon as I've had my coffee, just wait. I'm going to be glad to get rid of me, hey, Doc? Half an hour, it'll be dark, and I'm scrambling out of here. you feel good about that, eh, Sawbones? I can't say I'll be sorry. You hear that, Marcia? He thinks I'm going off and leave you two here to blow the whistle on me. He thinks I'm fool enough to do that. But they take me for a dope. Elkins, no. Good heavens, man, surely you won't. Elkins, do anything you want to me, but Marcia... She's deaf and dumb. She can't talk to the cops. I promise we won't. We won't breathe a word. Not a word. I beg you. Yes, <laughs> me, Doc. Yes, me, right. Who knows? Come on with that job. Coming? You like it hot, don't you? Give it here. Yeah, maybe I will. Maybe I won't, Doc. Maybe I'll kiss you both goodbye. Or maybe two bullets will do it. <laughs> it can't be sure. Gives you kind of a funny feeling, huh? Drink your coffee. Who's nervous now, huh? I don't know if you're alive or dead in a few minutes from now. Ain't that something? Drink your coffee, Elkins. Why? Why what? Why are you so anxious for me to drink this cup of coffee? You wanted it, didn't you? Is it good? I hope so. You hope so, huh? You hope maybe a few drops of poison will do the trick and get rid of me. What huh? are you talking you about? You wouldn't try a little thing like that now, would you, to save your own neck? Here, you drink. Me? Yeah, you drink it. Drink it, I say. Take a few swaps. Very well. Why not? For the silly thing. Give it here. There. Are you satisfied now? Okay. Wasn't taking any chance. Give me that coffee now. Dad? Dad? BCD. BCD. C2SO4. Quick. What's all that? What was that double talk? Double talk, Elkins? Come on, spill it. What was it all about? Where'd she run off to? She's gone to the next room. 
to the dispensary. What for? To get a drink. Drink? A what? Uh, a certain liquid. What? What for? What is this? Tell me, you scheming old devil. I'll kill you right now. What did she ask you? What did you answer? What? My daughter just asked me the antidote for poison. I gave it to her. Antidote? Poison? Epsom's poison coffee you both just drank, Elkins. It would take exactly 60 seconds to kill you. 60 seconds? No! No! Watch! Watch! Yes, Elkins? May I help you? Do you want something in this laboratory? Yes. Antidote, swallow. Oh, yes, I took some myself. I, I, quite well now, thank you. Give, give it to me. Where is it? No, isn't it a pity I forget? Where, where is it? What bottle? Oh. Holy fuck. Which one? Which? God, God, tell me. Tell me which one. Inside's burning. Which one? C2SO4. What's that? The antidote. C antidote. See what? But the full name's on the bottle. What, what's the name? What's the name? You're a doctor, huh? Doc, Doc. Surely you weren't merely posing? Give me a break. Any doctor would know, Dr. Bennett. Get it for me. But I'll scut it. I'd be glad to, Dr. Bennett. You had a trip of me. But I can't move. I must lie on this couch, perhaps, for life. Or else I'd get the bottle for you and save you. I'll kill you. I'll No, Dr. Bennett. There is no antidote to death. And so the curtain falls on prescription for murder, which was chosen by guest expert Bruno Fisher, whose latest thriller... The Restless Hands will soon be published. Next week at this time, Murder by Experts brings you the story of an invisible menace which terrorizes a whole city. Selected for your approval by the noted mystery writer, Mr. Lawrence Blockman. Until then, this is your host, John Nixon Carr, hoping you'll be with us again next week at this time. Prescription for Murder was written by Joseph Ruskell and Paul Momash. In the cast were Kenny Lynch, Kathy McGregor, Roger DeCoven, Bernie Grant, and Jack Curtis. Music is under the direction of Emerson Buckley, composed by Richard DuPage. Murder by Experts is produced and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Cogan. All characters in our story were fictitious. Any resemblance to the names of actual persons was purely coincidental. This is Phil Tonkin speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.